Hello and welcome back to round three coverage of the 2021 Dynamic Discs Open. We are at Emporia Country Club for the back nine of round three on the PDGA National Tour. Welcome back to the Weed State. It's big, sexy, berry commentary. Jeremy Colink, Nate Sexton, Paul Uliberry. Yeah, and Calvin Heimberg with that smooth, slow and steady wins the race type approach at four under par, no bogeys. Ricky, a little bit more excitement there. Seven birdies, two bogeys, right there, one shot behind the lead, tied with Ben Callaway for second place. Hole 10 is a par three, 391 feet with out of bounds rough down the entire right side and OB on the wide left side as well. Players usually will throw a mid range straight with a little bit of turnover. Forehand also an option to get down to the green. It's been slightly slower start than I think any of us would have expected. Each person on this lead group at one oh, point God. holding on to that lead, and that tree, which has been met by a bogey there shortly after for everyone except for Calvin. Well, yeah, I mean, yesterday we were completely spoiled with 49 million under par by I mean, just we don't Ben even, Calloway. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even have to exaggerate. We can just say it was 51 under par for our lead group, and that says enough right there. Oh, last branch, but he's still circle one. That got, that got pretty pimped. That was looking so nice. That was going to be a tap in. Still pretty close though. If you go and turn over, I believe that's his rock. Money. Great shot. I feel, I feel like this is one of the par threes. It's pretty slippery. You can easily throw it out of bounds right. And this miss, well, that's not a mistake. I was going to, I yeah. can't believe I was going to call that a mistake. <laughs> it looked like it had a lot of hyzer. Yeah. You almost said it. You almost said it. Oh, my. Anyway, sometimes people go OB that are on other cards in the tournament <laughs> on this hole. Some people throw that hyzer shot, and it doesn't go perfect, and it goes left. Ricky keeping that all birdies and a couple bogeys streak going through 10 holes now. Christmas tree. <laughs> Good birdie. Good putt. Back-to-back um, -back eagles. I mean, back-to-back -back bogeys for eagle, and now a missed putt from inside the circle. See if Ben can line this putt up. Missed a couple now. Missed a couple mm. plus one. All the wrong thoughts. Right? Hmm. Eagle said all the wrong thoughts, and if your swing thought isn't in the right place. Back hmm. off. Really Start your routine hmm. over. Hmm. Maybe some of this stems back to him not having the right swing thoughts on his par putt on hole eight. I would never be able to putt if that was really the case. <laughs> <laughs> Hole 11, par 3, 399. This one is tricky to stay in bounds on. You want to throw a big hyzer, but that path looms on the left. If you try to play too safe, you might find yourself over the wall on the right at the golf green. There's also path long, so speed control, super important here on 11. Ricky going with that stable max, I believe, right? Yeah, that clear one, I think that is. Oh, that champion max, the yellow one? This is early. This needs to dig. Oh, no way. It's so early. It didn't even have a chance. That's going to be well back. And that Christmas tree accordion streak will continue most likely unless he can make a really long putt. Well, one of the things about this hole as well is there's no spotter. And from the naked eye, a lot of times people think that your disc is traveling farther down the fairway than it really is. So let's see if uh, they give him maybe a better spot. That was a great shot from Calvin. Good adjustment. And trying to follow suit, going high with the force. Love it. Yeah, even better. Perfect shot. He does such a good job of using height. Yeah. Just 
to slow the skip. I mean, it's, a, it's something that only comes with really big power to have the opportunity to do that at this range, but what a job of it there. FD3 for Eagle. Let's see if he likes to go with a low straight line like Calvin or the high line like Ben. It looks like he kind of has gone in between, and yep. that's a yeah, great result. That was a little bit more Calvin-esque in the height. So they brought they they marked him way back there, but that seems pretty fair. That yeah, was that really right. really early release for Ricky. Pretty bad mistake. We don't see him usually miss by that much. Yeah, Eagle. Look at this. Eagle's only two under for the round, and he's only two back. Of course, that'll change right now with Calvin. That's short birdie putt. Hey, Calvin. <laughs> so Calvin now has the outright lead. And Ben Calloway will be one back. Just keep leapfrogging one way or the other. It's a ton of lead changes, a ton of unforced errors, missed putts, just things that we, we are not accustomed to, to seeing these guys do on this lead stage. Hole 12, par 3, 314 feet with OB flags down the right side rough and then a golf fairway on the left of this tree that's also out of bounds. You also have the wall long, so it's really just about missing this one tree. You see backhand flex shots and you see big forehands over the top. Calvin going inside flex and this is Heading right towards that Terry Miller Velcro tree. Kind of a nice kick out to the right, though. Yeah, definitely. And that's such a common mistake when going for that flex. Yeah, very easily you can turn it too much and just be out of bounds, like, kind of right away. Then we'll look to make that correction. Just get a slight bit more turn, maybe a bit lower as well. Is that going to get some ground play? Okay, enough airspace underneath the ceiling to get up there into circle one. Here's a little cheat code. Lots of height. Just a little bit of an arm movement here. And this thing is sent. This is a bit yeah. high. Dude, Ooh, it's hard to it though. So much extension on this shot. He really hunkers down low and just explodes through that line and really extends his arm out far. It's one of the reasons why he's able to get so much power behind it. Is this wide enough? Uh, eh. no, no, it's not. And that is going to set up a very difficult putt. Yeah, that'll kind of show you how far that's playing. Oh. Yeah. Whoa! Oh. Oh. So good. Raptor legs. <laughs> <laughs> We've literally seen Ricky make this exact putt before. <laughs> Look at this diving, full commitment. Look at that line. And oh, he, and he knew it was yeah, in, yeah. For sure he did. Incredible. And that keeps the birdie bogey streak alive. This man will not suffer a par out here. He hates him. That's kind of been his way. Like, he's either, like, all birdies, mm -hmm. or on the tournaments when, he's, uh, when he isn't running away with it so far this year, I feel like that's how it's been. Waco, he was like, birdie, 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 double bogey, and just going back and forth. Oh, as we yes. see Ben find his rhythm again on a nice big putt. Yeah, what a great putt there from Ben. Still just kind of hanging around, man. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you go. hanging around's not even fair. I mean, he's He's now tied for the lead. Yeah, hanging around the lead, this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's hanging around like the winner. Cause yeah, that but it's new territory for him, so it is hanging around. You know, it's not like he's been in this position before at this stage. So, I, I mean, with every birdie and as he hangs around these leaders, I feel like it's definitely he's hanging around. Hole 13, par 3, 394 feet with the out-of-bounds sidewalk on the right, out-of-bounds rough on the left. This one kind of sets up as a flat backhand. You just have to trust your overstable disc out over the out-of-bounds. 
count on that skip back to the basket. If you go straight at the basket, you're very likely to test the OB on the left. Notice that in big tournaments on this on this hole particular, the the big miss is right, especially when the nerves are kind of going. We'll see that probably tomorrow, not today, but some big moments of you've seen people kind of yank it straight out of bounds over there. It has sealed the fate for many tournaments. This was the uh, very important deciding hole in the 2016 World Championships in the FPO division when Katrina Page and Valerie Jenkins had a nice uh, kind of three-headed, he uh, I can't, I won't get through it. Battle. I won't even try. They had a nice battle going and down and Katrina and Page both threw out of bounds, I think multiple times and Valerie went on to win the title that year. What is Jerry doing laying down right in front of the tee to get that shot? Well, he's sacrificing life and limb for the beautiful angles, and we appreciate you for it. Inbounds? Inbounds? I believe so. Oh, we neglected the... Always forget about these things. Kind of noticed that nice kick that Eagle got kind of going left and then nicked off that tree, pushed straight towards the basket. Now he's just right outside of circle one, and that's nice because there is that out of bounds, like right to the right there that's, where he would be aiming at. That's a great touch for Calvin to swinging out that destroyer so wide, and just as soon as it hits the ground, it's just ready to stop on the dime. I think we're going to see it, folks. Ricky, Ricky's going to take his first part of the round, and it's hole 13. That's crazy. Ooh, sit, sit. That was okay. a good result. That's a scary putt. I mean, just to be high enough shows a lot of confidence because that's just a hard putt to commit to, looking straight at the out-of-bounds path. There's Let's the, go. There we we go. go. Now that swing thought is where it needs to be. Yeah, that's the most classic slow mos you'll. There's if you want to see more of them, just watch any video Eagles ever been in because there's like one per round, upwards of eight per round. That shot right there, 50 feet, dead on the line. A little breezy here. Yeah, maybe kind of got, maybe that was a little heavier than you had seen in the putters before him. What is that? Is that two or three missed putts in the circle for Calvin? Yeah, Rick. Yeah, at least two. Uh, it's Thank you. So Eagle going to card the only birdie. Here on hole 13. Really kind of a tough get, though. 13 is like, I feel like one of the harder par threes on the course. 14 par four, 751. A couple of gaps available to the players here off the tee. Super wide fairway, though there is technically OB on both sides. This rock wall down at the bottom kind of defines out of bounds before the golf green. Players can go with a big forehand, wide backhand hyzer, just get as much distance down the fairway as you can, and then you have this one huge tree to beat to get to the green. You can also go big roller. True. Wow, you certainly can. The wind is, I feel like it's somewhat favorable for someone. It's not that gusty out here where a roller wouldn't be the a pretty decent play, but Eagle probably the most likely person on the card to go roller. And his forehand is just too good to, to go any other, take any other type of shot on this hole. Oh, no. Gosh. Ben, yeah. was that trying to go Great shot. extremely wide? I didn't see where it went. It kind of fought its way down the fairway. You probably got nearly 300 feet, even though he hit a lot of early limage. That is so silly. Smoked. There's a Great shot, Rick. couple of inches off the ground out the gap and made its way up there probably near 400 feet. You hear him calling sit. This needs to get down. It down. might have too much edge. It certainly does as that oh. screams over the path out of bounds. Calvin at 
this point is the only person on the course currently bogey free. He's a, he's in a oh. great position to make a save, Gosh. I think, from over there. But mm -hmm. still, oh no, oh wow, he just really got away from Ben. Just rolled his wrist or something. There maybe a bad disc selection. Yeah, it seems like when he's been missing, he's been pulling shots. I think he was trying to do the big wide left to right bender okay. in there, and then by pulling it, Golf. I think he might have had the right shot shape. Just you know. Yanked it a little bit. And Eagle comes up short with his forehand. And then yells golf. Golf. He said, Eagle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thought he was just reminding himself. Come on, golf. No. He was reminding himself of his own name and how mad he is at it. <laughs> Who gave me should've, that name? Should have been named Par. Yeah, right. There it is. Makes that hole really easy when you have that much distance off the tee, or even able to. You know, those discs that he's throwing are very stable. Kind of just able to stay right at the, that out-of-bounds line. And see Calvin not having that same kind of shot selection. Leaks it left out-of-bounds right there. Poor approach, wow. leaving this long putt. Wow. And now Calvin will indeed join the rest of the field with at least one bogey on the scorecard. Mm. So oh close to going in. Really? Appreciate it. Looks like we're going to have another Over leapfrog right. situation. Ricky with the birdie. Calvin's going to drop a stroke. Ben's going to drop a stroke. And now Ricky's going to have the lead. Hole 15, par 3, 438. Technically an island green here. This one is a big island, but you have to make it on in between these paths. Or you see the flags and the wall defining that right and long sides of the basket. Big wide hyzer is the main play here. There's one tree that you need to beat. Get around that and get a soft skip, and you should find yourself a birdie putt. If hole 11 at Jones Gold is the big island in Hawaii, this is Australia. Oh. But it's so much longer that it's still harder in some way. Mm -hmm. Short. <laughs> it's a nice shot. Yeah. bit short, but very serviceable. Yeah, I feel like he's like 20 feet. And Eagle is really frustrated with this. Is it so wide it's going to stay out of bounds? It's no, it's not going to stay out of bounds. In. But what? Eagle is having a, a roller coaster day kind of mentally. He's, he's really. Uh, Audibly frustrated on a lot of holes. It really just started with the, the missed par putt on hole eight. And since then, it's just been that one pocket, you know, the, the little turkey oh, there. Get by it. Get by it. On 11, yeah. 12, and 13. And then since then, it's, uh, well, every time it's been, you know, back and forth, like you said. That's the shot. Wow. wow. Big it. swinging shot. Great shot, Calvin. Hold on. That Sweet. is so stable. What the heck? Wow. Weird roll. Okay, so like 27 feet. <gasps> oh, no. Calvin, you can do this. Buddy. Yeah, that, that basket feels like it might have like a little hex on it right yeah, now. Calvin. Calvin able to take the birdie, so he's going <laughs> to drop a stroke, get a stroke right back, and just like that, he's tied the, the lead now at 32 under par. So bizarre. 
This is just setting up perfect for the final day. I mean, really there are so many names still in play. It's incredible. And these guys had all the opportunity in the world to really distance themselves out of, in a position that they really could not be caught in the final round. But with this play, not that they're playing terribly. They're playing a lot better than the field average. Of course they are. But not taking advantage of these opportunities that are right there in front of them. If they were playing clean and just making a few more putts, no one could catch them. Hey, you guys like two-stroke swings? I do. Yeah, I think we're going to see some. Hole 16, par 3, 315 feet. This is the signature hole, the island, the beautiful wall behind the basket. Anything that misses this island goes to a drop zone. I happen to know it's 84 feet from there to the <laughs> basket. Not likely to hit that putt. Let's see how many of these players can stick it on the island. Oh, yeah, this looks low. I love That's the that. play I feel like. I saw a lot of people play that skip shot. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose, but it really sets up to, for a soft landing on the island and a nice little putt. Oh, boy. Hit something and drop. Hit something and drop? Where? In the water, unfortunately. East run. Get in. Oh, come, come on. on. Wow. Come on, I would love it. Incredible. Why can't I just get an ace? Oh, sick. Why can't I just, just get an ace easier. on this? He has been close. He has been close. <laughs> over and A over. lot of times. You'll get it, Eagle. You're a young man. You'll get that ace. <laughs> this needs help. Big Good skip, and then it's ace. catch. Nope. Mm. And did not have that forward momentum that Calvin had going into the green. Also, just a slightly steeper part of the bank, perhaps, and two are on and two are going to the drop zone. You know it's tough when Waisaki lays it up. If you miss this putt left at all, if it's a little stalled out, it's going to go back in that drink, and you just can't make that mistake. You can't really run it like back in the day, 2018, round two, Simon making that big 100-foot par save when the basket was a little bit deeper on the island, a little bit safer run, perhaps. Now Calvin making a nice little move here. That two-stroke swing. Him and Eagle, <laughs> loving it. It's, it's. I mean, if this scorecard wasn't right there at the bottom of the screen, it'd be impossible to keep up with all these lead changes and all these different bogeys and all the things that have happened. The, the story of what's going on this round is just, it's incredible. Hole 17, par 4, 806 feet, low ceiling drive with out-of-bounds on both sides. You'd like to push up this fairway past all these trees into this area to open up a high shot across the out-of-bounds to the green. You could go forehand or backhand. These are the two trees you really need to miss. And then to top it off, you've got an OB path just beyond the basket. You can see that nice stiff tailwind which is going to make this shot a little bit tougher because you want to swing something from left to right. Oh, no. And that just doesn't it's want to. Sit. It's not a helping win. Okay, it's safe. Wow. Look at that nice slowdown. He was worried about a running skip up into the OB. Stops nicely. I think he'll be fine with that. Get down. Hit the tree, please. Great tree. That's great tree. That means a lot, actually. Make you serious, that is. Okay. No, turn. Sit. Sit. Oh, that's good. Sit. No, that's good. <laughs> We're just doing great shots and being go, buddy. incredibly anxious through the entire flight <laughs> until he sees that green flag. Oh, oh I don't know if this one's going to be so fortunate. He's going to need a little help off those limbs and he does uh, not get it. Not what Ben needed after that bogey on 16. That's going to be a very challenging par save. I don't know if he's in 
good enough position to attack that green on his second. Ooh, the low forehand. You don't see this yeah. very often because this tree is there. Not Just so like many of those kind of randomly placed trees on this on this approach shot. The, the way to get to this green and the safest way is, is to get a nice tee shot up there where Ricky and Calvin are and go over the top on the second. Low backhand, looking for a couple of skips. Got a couple of skips, but he's way short. Oh, and that's a bit of a missed shot there from Calvin. Landing there off the tee, he's got to take advantage of that approach. Just like that, door open for Ricky again. And that's the play you like to see there. If you can get up and over. Oh, and he says right. Just a dart. And some more crazy score changes. <laughs> Musical chairs out here, I feel like. No surprise at all. Calvin leaking that one a bit off. There's still a little bit of work left to do. Holloway is now going to suffer a back-to-back -back bogey. Not happy about it. Whoa. I guess if there was a time for these guys not to have their best stuff, it's nice that none of them have their best stuff. Yeah. Because it's shaping up to be... Super tight going into the final round. And look at this, Paul. If you're talking about super tight, the scores going to this hole were 30, 31, 32, 33. When they finish this hole, it's going to be a bunch of 32. 32, 32, 32. Ben obviously dropping back to 29, but the other three guys are going to be all tied up going into the last hole. Hold on, Ricky. Wow. And what a last hole it is. The 18th out here at the Country Club, par 4, 673. The drone is drunk. It is lost. It is on the wrong fairway. <laughs> you need to go to the right early and then cross the water with the backhand hyzer. Nobody will go this way today. Our players are going to play chip shots to the right and then set up that high hyzer shot into the basket. Ricky going a little short. Is that going to be short? No. Oh. That is dry. Okay. Oh, oh right now. my luck fest. Skipping from one really large puddle into a slightly smaller one. He's back in butt foot. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Better. Could, needs to actually sit down, probably. Yeah, that's wow. as good as you can throw it. It's honestly, probably a little bit of anxiety when he released that because that's going so far that you really don't even need to push that back OB that much. It's a touchy shot. It's right in between, like, don't don't fluff it and don't hit it. And I, I find it to be pretty tricky to, hit, to get this distance just right. Oh, Paul. Mudfoot. Mudfoot. And you know the kind of shoes he wears. It's going straight through to the socks, in between the toes, mud, foot all night and and one thing that calvin doesn't do between rounds is change socks or shoes or shower so that mud will be carried with him to the final day and that i just made up and i i shouldn't have said it that was really <laughs> dumb oh and there's this slip that's yeah. the mud foot absolutely but he does but he gets across yeah, he's going to be, he said mud pile. No, that's mud foot, Rick. He doesn't, he doesn't want the coverage. Oh, man. Oh. Brutal footing, but look at, he's able to swing through it. Great you know, forward bounce. You know who does watch the coverage? Calvin Heiberg. He looked at me today and he well said, done, I guess I have a new nickname. <laughs> so, and I looked at him and I said, what is that? He said, is it Mudfoot? And I said, yes, Calvin. That well, he, he knew right was, what was coming for him then when he <laughs> threw that drive. 
Oh, sit. sit down. Down. Okay, okay. Look at that spotter go. Thank you to all the spotters, by the way. There's a huge crew of volunteers out here in Emporia. They are running so many courses. Couldn't do it without them. It's hot out there, too. Make sure they're staying hydrated. Eagle's going to hit this. Wow. Why can't I just two this hole? He yeah, says. what is this? <laughs> What's it about this hole that I can't two it? I just want an A16 and two 18. Big momentum shifter right here for this. 35 footer uphill playing about 42. Oh, that's it. It's going to finish Ben's round at two under par. Not his best, but guess what? He's really not that far. Yeah, he's still absolutely a factor. Yeah, Calvin. Nice. Good job, buddy. How many? We missed. He missed three putts inside the circle. Threw out of bounds three times. He's right there. He's tied for the lead. The boy, Rick. Calvin very easily can clean up six strokes from this round. So good to eagle. It seemed like he was just like all over the place with missed shots and missed putts. He must have chained out five putts yeah. from all kinds of distances. Ben was out of bounds a lot, but still salvages something decent, even with a bogey par, bogey, bogey par finish. And all that frustration we saw from Eagle, he still shot five under par, bogey free on the back nine, and he will be at 33, just like Calvin. Ricky one shot back at 32, but surprise, surprise, folks, look who's on top of the leaderboard, oh. tied with the other 1050 boys. We got the 1050 club, final round. Mr. Fire Emoji himself, Paul Macbeth, into the lead, tied at 33. Is this, <laughs> is it Christmas Eve? <laughs> oh my. What are we going to see? 33, 33, and 32 with the 1050 boys. And guess who's in fifth place? The Could other it be 1050. Chris? Boys. Chris Dickerson, right there behind him. This is going to be an absolute joy to call the final round here, the fourth round at the 2021 DDO. We hope you come back and watch it. Thank you to the Founders Club. We'll see you then.